Hello and welcome to this new tutorial video series. Uh, this is going to be an introduction to the use of the IDF to pH toolkit for the construction of PHPP energy models, which are used in the design and certification of passive house buildings uh, to the International Passive House Institute certification. Uh, my name is Ed May, uh, and I am an architect and a passive house consultant with Building Type. We're a small building performance consulting company based in Brooklyn, New York. We work almost exclusively on Passive House and other high performance uh, uh, projects here in New York. Um, I hope that this video series will be a helpful introduction to these new tools and that they can get you uh, and, and your own process up and running um, with your own, your own modeling. Um, in this series, I'm going to cover the basics of model construction and export to PHPP. Um, and in this very first video, I'm going to review the, the basic workflow for creating an Energy Plus uh, and IDF to PH model and then connecting it to your Excel based PHPP. Um, in future videos, I'll be sure to, or we'll be diving into all sorts of other aspects of the modeling process, um, including detailed review and analysis of geometry and construction assemblies. Uh, we'll talk about windows. Uh, we'll talk about detailed room by room data, ground contact surfaces, thermal bridges, fresh air ventilation systems, mechanical systems, um, and, and other sort of aspects of the PHPP setup um, and certification options as well. Uh, we, we might even get into the variance worksheet a little bit in the future. Uh, we'll see how these videos go. Uh, so uh, let's uh, uh, jump right in. Um, if you are watching these videos, hopefully you are already familiar with the IDF to PH tools and that you've downloaded them for, uh, for your own system. If you haven't yet, you can just go to IDF the number two, ph.com, uh, and you can download uh, all of the relevant files that you'll need here from, from the website. Um, a couple of things that I would like to just point out here before we, before we get going um, are, are uh, a couple of things that you'll need in order for this to work on your own system. So first of all, you're going to have to have Rhino 6 installed, or, or better, if you're on 7, uh, that's fine as well. Um, but um, unfortunately, Rhino 5 um, will not work with these tools. There's there's some of the new functionality in Rhino 6 is required for these tools to actually work properly. You'll also need an installed and working copy of the Ladybug tools, uh, version uh, 0.68 or better, and the Honeybee tools, version 0.65 or better. These are, I guess nowadays, considered the legacy tools. Um, so you can download these from the Ladybug Tools website. Uh, you will need these for the uh, the IDF to pH um, uh, to work. It, just a note here, the IDF to pH is in no way associated with, it's not a part of the Ladybug Tools, it's not made by the Ladybug Tools team. It's an independent project um, and uh, uh, just uh, harnesses some of the, the um, uh, features of those ladybug and honeybee tools um, in order to do what it does. Uh, you'll certainly need a, a version of Energy Plus installed on your system. Um, you, you need that to run any of the honeybee tools, so you definitely have to have uh, Energy Plus and Radiance installed on your system and working. Uh, and you'll also have to have a copy of the PHPP, the Passive House Planning Package, version 9.6 on your system. Um, the uh, uh, SI, the metric version only, um, uh, there's uh, no connection to the IP version just yet. Um, Honeybee, of course, is all metric as well. Um, so uh, make sure you're using the metric version. Make sure you're using version 9.6. That's the version that works now. Um, so you will have to have a copy of that for all of this to work. And of course, you'll have to have Microsoft Excel uh, installed on, on your uh, system as well for the streaming to work. Um, one, one brief note about that. Um, I'm going to be showing, I'm going to be working on Parallels. So I, I run on a Mac OS, um, but I'm going to be working on uh, Parallels. Um, in order for the streaming to work, you do have to have Excel installed on your Windows OS side. So if you're using Parallels or Bootcamp or any of those others, you are going to have to install a version of Parallels over on your um, uh, over on your uh, uh, Mac, uh, your Windows OS side as well for the streaming to actually work properly. Um, there's some other stuff here about what's required in order for this to work, and of course there are detailed instructions about how to download and install the IDF to PH tools here on the website. So feel free to go to the website there and um, uh, shoot us a line if you have any uh, questions or anything uh, about about any of that. All right, so let's get right into the modeling here. You can see on my screen here that I have started up a um, a 
uh, a, a blank Rhino file. So I've got a new Rhino file operating here, and I've got a blank Grasshopper definition opened up as well. So we're going to start from a from from zero here and work our way towards a complete Energy Plus and a PHPP file. Um, as I said, in this first this first video, this one might be a little longer than some other ones because I, I want to get us sort of um, all the way to an operational PHPP uh, by the time we're by the time we're done here. Um, and so, in order to start building our PHPP, our pass files planning package uh, energy model, uh, we're actually not going to start with the PHPP at all. We're going to start with a Honeybee Energy Plus model instead. Uh, you'll see uh, as we go through one of the uh, Core pieces of the core tenets of the workflow here is that we're going to uh, piggyback on top of the Honeybee workflow where, wherever possible, the Honeybee tools wherever possible. So we're going to actually start all of our, our work here, not with our, our new IDF to PH tools, but with the existing Honeybee tools. So as with any Honeybee or Ladybug work, um, the first thing that we need to do is actually drop the Honeybee and Ladybug um, uh, core components onto our canvas, onto our uh, Grasshopper canvas here. So I'm going to grab the Ladybug tools. I'm going to drop it onto my uh, canvas there. So you can see that that loaded a bunch of um, uh, important functionality. I'll do the same thing with the Honeybee side. So go to Honeybee. I'm going to grab that, drop that onto my canvas here. Uh, and so now these are active in my Grasshopper scene. So if we wanted to start, let's just start by making the simplest version of an Energy Plus Honeybee model that we can. If we wanted to start, um, there are lots of ways we could do that, uh, but probably the simplest would be to use, let's say, uh, create Honeybee surfaces. So we might use this create Honeybee surfaces component to create valid Honeybee surfaces from some geometry. We might then pass those to this Honeybee create uh, Honeybee zones uh, uh, tool. Right, so that would then combine those surfaces together to create a valid Energy Plus model, and we might then push that out to Open Studio or Energy Plus. So let's take a look at how that might work. I'm going to drop those onto the canvas here. I'm going to take this Honeybee Create Surfaces, and drop that onto the canvas. I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to grab the Create Honeybee Zones, and I'm going to drop that onto the canvas as well. So these guys are going to get connected together. We're going to pass some geometry into our uh, Honeybee Create Surfaces. That's going to then flow into the Create Zones. So let's connect these guys together. I'm going to have some surfaces that are going to come out. Those are going to get input into these the surface input here. So I'm just going to connect this guy together. So now these are connected together. I'm going to turn this off. We'll also need a name. So I'm going to call this um, Example Zone. So we're going to need a name for this to actually uh, work. And you can see here that we are currently getting nothing. And that's to be expected. We haven't passed any geometry in. We haven't uh, given anything uh, for the Honeybee tools to actually build a zone out of. So let's do that. There are several ways that we could bring some geometry into our grasshopper scene. So let's just build ourselves a really quick uh, little mass that we can use uh, uh, to, to build off of. And let's just make it three meters high. So here's the simplest little building that, uh, that we could build, just a box. We can reference that all sorts of different ways. We can come in here and we could say uh, set one B rep, so that would be fine. We could then pass that into the geometry here, that would be fine. And you can see here we're now getting a valid Energy Plus, or excuse me, a valid Honeybee model out the backside. That would be one way. Um, in order to make things a little bit more flexible, I'm actually going to use a geometry pipeline. So I'm going to use one of these geometry pipeline uh, components from the params input. Uh, and that's just to make things a little bit more flexible, but you could do it any way you like. Um, I'm going to say filter everything, give me everything that's on the default zone. And I want just the uh, geometry. So here this pipeline is going to grab going to grab everything that's on that default zone, and it's going to pass it in. So I'm going to connect that to the geometry here. And let me turn this off. Uh, so now we're getting some geometry. And whatever geometry I draw on the default layer will get pushed into our honeybee zone because we've set it up using that pipeline there. Uh, so the, the pipeline is now active. We're moving things through. And we're getting a good honeybee zone at the end. So what do we do with this now that we have our honeybee zone? Let me clean this up a little bit here. Uh, what do we do with this now that we have that, that nice honeybee zone? Well, the simplest thing we could do um, in order to actually see some results would be to come up to Honeybee, 
would be to uh, use this export to open studio plugin so we might drop that onto the canvas here it's a larger uh, component for sure um, it allows us to put in all sorts of inputs now we don't have to actually fill in most of these inputs but we definitely have to fill in a couple so for instance the zone geometry has to connect to this hb zone input so okay so we definitely need that we also are definitely going to need a energy plus weather file. So we, we have to have some one of the minimum pieces we have to have is a, a location for our model. So we're going to have to have some, some EPW file location here. Uh, fine. So I'll go to Ladybug. I'll go to the uh, these guys here and I'll use um, uh, I think the open, yes, this is the right one. I always forget which one is which. So the open EPW and, and STAT file, I'm going to take the EPW output. I'm going to put it into my EPW weather file input. Now you'll notice here that nothing's happening. This says it's failed to collect data, and that's because we haven't hooked up, we have not connected uh, any valid URL to the weather file download here. So in order to get a good down, uh, a URL, <clears throat> I'm going to use this download EPW component. I'm just going to put it up here temporarily because we'll delete this from our canvas as soon as we're done with it. As soon as I put in true, you see this will boot up my um, web browser here and um, presents me with a weather station map. So I'm going to zoom in and we just need to choose a weather station, some weather station. Now I'm in New York at the moment, so I'm going to choose the, um, I'm just going to grab the JFK weather, uh, a TMY3, uh, uh, an EPW file. So I'm going to say copy link to click clipboard. I'll click that. I'll then close this and I will paste that link, that URL into this panel here. And notice it's just it's just a zip file. <clears throat> so it has a TMY3 file, it's got an EPW file, it's got um, uh, some other information there. And as soon as I do that, note that that warning goes away and I have a valid EPW file. So if I take a look at the output there, I have a valid EPW file, which is coming out of this component and getting fed into my Energy Plus setup. So this export to Open Studio is gonna set up my Energy Plus simulation and obviously one of the critical inputs there is going to be a valid weather file for us to use. <clears throat> so that's all working now. I can go ahead and delete this from the canvas at this point. Um, and at this point, this guy is ready to run. Now let's take a look at what we're getting. Well, we are not getting an IDF file yet. And we are not getting an Open Studio file yet. So in order for this to, in order for this component to run, we need to set up just a couple more settings. First of all, I need to tell it, yes, write that Open Studio file. So as soon as I say true, notice now I get a good OSM Open Studio file, but I'm still not getting an IDF file, and that's because in order to get the IDF file, I need to <clears throat> run the simulation. And if we hover over Run the Simulation. You'll notice that there are several different inputs. I could set it to true or false or zero or one or two or three. And all of those are gonna control the way that this component functions. For our purposes, in order to use the IDF to pH tools, we do not need to run the actual Energy Plus simulation. You can, it's not gonna hurt anything, but you do not actually need to run the Energy Plus simulation. What I do though need is the IDF file. And so you'll notice here that uh, run simulation type number three creates the IDF file, but does not actually run the Energy Plus simulation. That is going to help us in the sense that it's gonna go a lot faster. The Energy Plus simulation obviously is gonna take a long time. So if we're setting up our file as we're getting things working, uh, we can do that much, much faster, much, much more easily by just creating the IDF file not running the actual simulation. We'll talk a lot more about what the IDF file is in a few minutes if you're not familiar um, with what that is. For now, I'm just gonna say three, and I'm gonna input type three into run the simulation. And notice as soon as I do that, now I have an IDF file in the IDF file address output. That means that this component is now generating a valid Energy Plus IDF file. Now, one other thing that I just don't like here is that everything is going to everything is flowing through to the default um, uh, directory right now. So the C ladybug unnamed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that, that's fine. Uh, that'll work. But in order to kind of keep things manageable and keep things tidy, let's give a let's give a let's give a path here. C colon and let's let's put it in. I don't know. IDF two ph example. 
let's say that that's going to be our uh, working directory. So notice here that we now all of our files are going to get saved in that working directory. And let's give a name here. Um, I'm going to call this my, I'm just going to call this the energy plus. Uh, and we'll, you'll see in a minute, that'll be, we'll differentiate that from some of the other files that we'll uh, put into that idf to ph example. Um, so we'll call it e uh, e energy plus in order to sort of keep things uh, manageable, keep things tidy. So uh, you can see here we have a couple of file path outputs. So these file path outputs, these files are what are getting generated by this export to Open Studio. So let's take a look at these files. Let's look at what's in these files, because these files are going to be important for us as we rig up the rest of our IDF to PH uh, uh, connection here. So let me go to my file explorer. And let's see, we'll go to our, let's go to my C drive. Here's IDF to PH example, the folder. And inside of the folder, you can see now we have this E plus. So E plus is where all of these files are going to get saved. So I go to E plus, open studio, E plus, model to IDF, and there's that IDF file. So notice uh, I just followed this pathway right here, this uh, path, to take me to that file. Now, if you're not familiar with an IDF, an IDF is the blueprint that Energy Plus uses in order to run the simulation. So an IDF is not a very fancy file. It is, in fact, just a text file. If I right-click and say Open with Notepad, you'll see that it's just a bunch of text information that describes my building. And it describes my building in lots of different ways. So I've got a bunch of kind of, uh, I don't even know what information here at the front. If I scroll down, you'll see I've got a bunch of building surfaces. So here's some kind of ugly name. I've got a surface type, which is floor, a construction type, which is exterior floor, a zone name, which is example zone, uh, a boundary condition, which is ground, I've got sun exposure, wind exposure, and then lastly, I've got a whole bunch of vertices. I've got four vertices for the surface, and then I've got another surface. And so this IDF file is just a collection of all of this information about your building. Now, it can get very complicated with large, complex buildings, for sure, but at heart, it's just a text description of your building. And it's all constructed in a very particular way with a very particular formatting so that it can be read effectively by Energy Plus. So we've got a bunch of surface information. If we were to scroll down a little bit further, we see lots and lots of schedule information. Oh, so much schedule information. Uh, and then if we go down even a little bit further, we start to see things like materials and constructions. Materials, of course, having uh, a conductivity and a thickness, um, uh, you know, a, a specific heat capacity. Um, there's lots of different information that we might have about the various bits and pieces of our building. But it's all in this IDF file. Now, a text format is maybe not the best way to work with that file or to view that file. So there's a, a couple different ways we can view the information there. I could also right click and say open with EP launch. So EP launch is a, a program that comes with Energy Plus when you install the Energy Plus engine there. Uh, and it's just a something of a viewer or a, a sort of um, a dashboard for your Energy Plus. Uh, we could use this to simulate the Energy Plus model. So at this point, I have a valid IDF file. I could go off and simulate the building and get a bunch of results. That would be fine. If for our purposes, all we're going to do is just review the, the blueprint, review the inputs. We're not actually going to simulate the Energy Plus file yet. We can do that later, um, and it's uh, useful and, and, and great for all sorts of reason, things, but we're not, we don't need to do it now. Instead, what I'd like to do is take a look at this Edit IDPF, IDF Editor here. If I click that button, you'll see a little um, uh, editor will pop up, which is basically showing me all of the same stuff that I just saw in the text file. So this is all the same data. It's all the data from the text file. It's just inside of kind of a little, um, uh, um, you know, a little program that they've built here, a little, a little um, uh, display uh, uh, graphical user interface here for the, that text file. Um, and so I've got my version, my simulation control, my building, um, some you know rules about how the calculation and the simulation are to be executed, etc. And then I've got a bunch of blank inputs. So you can see on my list here as I scroll through, there's a lot of stuff that's just blank and unused. And I know that because uh, it says right here that there are no instances of this particular type. 
Now, Energy Plus models can be very, very complex. They can be very, very large and detailed, um, but they don't always have to be. Uh, in fact, we can make quite simple ones, and this is uh, a, a very simple one. If I would like to uh, sort of hide all of these unused classes, there's a couple ways I can do that, but the easiest way I can come up here to view and I can just click show classes with objects only. Now the hotkey for that is control L and what that's going to do is it's just going to hide all those empty classes and it's just going to make this a little easier to work with. So now we can see here in our listing, these are only the elements which are actually being used. So there's all sorts of things we can do with Energy Plus, uh, but we don't always have to do all of those things. And so this is just filtering down to the things that we did use. So for instance, I've got some materials. Here's all the materials. We saw some of these materials in our text file there. So we've got a bunch of materials. We've got some constructions. Constructions are collections of materials in a certain order. Uh, we've got some building surfaces. Here's all of our surfaces with our uh, surface type, our construction name, our zone name, and then all of our vertex information down below here. So it's the same information as our text file, just presented in a different way in this IDF editor. So we can view and interact with that IDF in all sorts of different ways. We can do it through the text file, we can do it through the, um, the EP launch editor here. Um, uh, there's uh, different ways we can do it. But for our purposes, what I want is the data in this file. I want the information in this file. The information in this file is in a consistent, clear, um, and, and um, uh, predictable format. And so I can use that data to build my PHPP model. So what I'm going to do in the grasshopper scene is I'm going to read and interpret all of the information in that IDF file and I'm going to convert it into a PHPP file. So we're going to do that using a couple of new components. So, so far we've just been working with our PH with our, our typical honeybee scene here, uh, and now we want to start to work with some new uh, uh, components. So I'm going to clean up my I'm going to clean up my uh, definition here a little bit. Let me just move some of this stuff around so that it's a little bit cleaner for us here. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to just I'm just going to give this a heading. I'm going to call this um, create honeybee zone. Let me give it a nice big font so that we can see it later on when our definition gets kind of large. And over here, I'm going to call this I'm going to call this uh, export to energy plus. Right, so here's these guys, and um, just to kind of keep things really clear, let me do this. I'm just going to give us, ourselves some break lines here. So there's a there's a break line. Let me do this. I'm going to say send that to Rhino. Where are we? There's this. Do a line of about the same length, except a nice straight one. And then I say, load from Rhino. Uh, boom, da -da. There we go. So there's a, a nice break line. And we'll just give ourselves some division lines here, um, just so that we can you know, keep things keep things tidy. Let's give it a, uh, yeah, that's fine. Give it a dotted. All right, so we'll use this to kind of um, segment, our, segment our zones here as we go. So there's our export to Energy Plus. I'm going to delete these guys now. Um, and now what we're going to do is I'm gonna, we're going to take our IDF and we're going to convert IDF, oops, IDF to a PHPP. So that's going to be the next step in this workflow here. So I'm going to use that IDF file and I'm going to convert it to a PHPP. And again, I'm going to do that using some new components. So if I go to the building type rollout here, the first thing that we need to do, so we have a whole bunch of new tools here. So again, these are you can download these from the idf to ph website, install them on your system. Um, when it's all operational, you'll have a bunch of new components here in this um, building type uh, uh, heading. The very first thing we need to do is we need to drop the core uh, definitions onto the or, or methods onto the uh, onto the, the canvas here. So just like we have to do with our honeybee and ladybug, we're going to do the same thing with this IDF to PH. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drop that onto the canvas here. Now we're not going to do anything with this. This is just going to sit in the background uh, and it's going to, all it's going to do is bring some important classes and methods into uh, some features, some tools, um, uh, and make them available for us to use later on. So this guy will just sit over here. All of these can just kind of sit off to the side there. We don't need to worry about those. All right, so once it's on the canvas, though, now I can use some of these new tools. 
So these new tools will not work until you put that core um, definition onto the canvas there. So what are we going to use? Well, we've got some new modeling tools. Well, we don't need to use any of those yet. Instead, we're going to use some of these new IDF to pH conversion tools. So the first thing I want to do is read the IDF file. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab this read IDF file component and drop it onto the canvas. And what I want to do is connect the output file address. So remember, all this is is a file address. It's just a pointer to a file. I'm going to connect that to the IDF file address input. And this guy's going to run, and it's going to do a bunch of work in the background. And what's it going to do? It's going to read that IDF file, and it's going to parse all of the objects and interpret all of those parameters. So this is bringing the IDF file back into Grasshopper. It's bringing all the data back into Grasshopper. So that's fine. We can't send this to PHPP yet. We need to convert this IDF data into PHPP data. And we're going to do that using another new component. So up here, I'm going to use this IDF to PH objects component. This is actually going to translate or convert all of the IDF information into PHPP ready information. So you can see there's an IDF objects output, and there's an IDF objects input. And so we're just going to connect up the two. So I'm just going to connect this IDF objects output to the IDF objects input. This guy will run. And what we now have are a bunch of PHPP style entities. So we have a whole bunch of information here. So we've got some building surfaces. We've got some constructions. We've got some material parameters. We've got some, we've got, I think we've got a simple ventilation system, uh, infiltration of ventilation system. Uh, this guy is going to read and interpret the IDF file and turn them into PHPP ready elements. The PHPP, the Passive House Planning Package, and Energy Plus are very different than one another. They do not work with things in the same way. Right? They're different tools made by different people, by different companies, by different teams. And so we have to do some conversion. We have to sort of translate the IDF file into PHPP ready elements. And so that's what this whole component here is doing. This is just going to interpret the IDF, and it's going to convert all of that data over to PHPP ready elements. OK, so if that's now ready to output, we need now to figure out how we get this PHPP information into Excel. PHPP is an Excel-based uh, calculator. And so we need to do a little bit of work on Excel. So let's take a minute and let's talk about the PHPP. Let me delete these guys here. Zoom back in. Let's talk about the PHPP. Uh, let me, so if I bring up an empty version. I'm just going to open up an empty version of the PHPP. So this is an empty version of the PHPP version 9.6. And it's just what it sounds like. It's an empty version of the PHPP numerical energy model or, or calculator, uh, which is an Excel-based energy modeling tool, which takes in climate information, areas, uh, components, windows, shading, ventilation. It takes in all of the uh, parts of a building as numerical entry and calculates yearly energy consumption for heating, for cooling, for domestic hot water, for all other sources. Uh, calculates peak heat loads, peak cooling loads, as well as primary energy demand that is taking into account or factoring uh, losses due to, uh, due to the utility grid. Uh, so the PHPP yields a lot of useful information that we can use when evaluating and designing our buildings. Um, and in addition, the PHPP is going to be required for any certified passive houses that you're looking to certify through the Passive House Institute, the international certification. So uh, the PHPP is a, a useful tool and an important tool, especially if you're doing certification work. It can be a bit unwieldy, though, when you're first starting to learn. Um, in addition, it's a numerical uh, model. That is, we're expected to input all of our information as a list of numbers. And the reality is that that's just not a thing that human beings are very good at. It's very easy for us to make lots of mistakes when we do it that way. Uh, and so we'll, we're going to show here, we're going to demonstrate a process whereby we're going to really harness the 
Rhino geometry model to push as much information as possible into this PHPP spreadsheet. I never want to actually enter information in this Excel spreadsheet by hand. I want everything to come from the Rhino document. So this is our empty PHPP. So we need this empty PHPP. Notice there's this is all just uh, notice there's no information in this PHPP. Right? So there's nothing here. Oops. So I'm going to close this. And I need to put that empty PHPP somewhere. So let me open up the file viewer here. So here's our file viewer. Remember, this is in our working directory. So I said our working directory was going to be um, IDF to, to PH. Um, so let's make a new folder in here called uh, PHPP. Oops, just one P. Pass files planning package. And let's put our, let me put our copy, oops, copy, and I'm going to paste, come on. There we go. I'm going to paste a copy of our blank PHPP. This is a copy of the blank PHPP. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it source, which will make sense in a second. So I'm going to rename this file as source. If I, just, to, just to be super clear, if I open this back up, take a look at this again, there's nothing but a blank PHPP. There's nothing in here. It's a completely empty PHPP. OK, so I have a blank PHPP, and I would like to populate it with all of this information, with all of these PHPP objects. So how are we going to do that? How am I going to connect Excel to Grasshopper and push all of this data out to that Excel model? We're going to do that using one of these new components here. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to use this Open Excel Workbook component in order to establish the connection to Excel. So let me clean up a little bit here, put these down here. We've got our open Excel workbook here. And there's a couple of things that we need to set in order for this component to work. So uh, we have a, a run input. That's a, that's a sort of on off switch. It allows us to um, uh, tell the component to run when we're ready to run it. Um, there's a, a, a couple of other options there we don't need to go through right now. Then it's got three, three inputs at the bottom, old file name, new directory, a new file name. And what this is asking for is the source, so the blank PHPP. And then it's asking, where would you like me to save the new PHPP once I've put all the data in it? So let's give it a little bit of information here. So the, the source PHPP we said was going to be in C IDF to PH example. And we said we were going to put it in PHPP, oops, IDF to PH example, and we named it source.xlsx. Right? Go back to my file viewer for just a second. There's my source, right? IDF to PH example, PHPP, source.xlsx. This is the blank PHPP. So the empty PHPP is going to be the path for the old files. Let me, let me name this, call this source PHPP address. Right? And let's there we go. That's a little bit. That's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bright. Let's do like there we go. Right, so there's our there's our source PHPP. Now we also need a uh, well we'll call this the working directory where we're going to save this directory where we're going to save all this information. And let's say let's just say we'll save it to the PHPP. So that's fine. So we'll put that there. And then lastly, we just need a, we need to give it a file name. We need to give it a file name. And I don't know, we can name it anything. Let's say output file. Uh, and we'll just give it a, we'll say 01. Whoops. There we go. And that'll be our new file name. Right, so we've cleaned up a little bit here. Just tighten these up. Right, so these are the important inputs for this Excel uh, to, to operate correctly. Now, for to establish the connection between Grasshopper and the Excel, all we need to do is input a true into the run dialog here. And in the back, you can see uh, uh, Excel is sort of spooling up. Um, it's getting ready to getting ready to run. Um, uh, in the background there. So once I, as soon as it's uh, as soon as it's done, sort of initializing and starting up, um, you'll see this will all come back to life. There we go. Now we only have to do that once, 
there's my Excel. We only have to do that once every session just to establish the connection between Grasshopper and Excel. And here's my empty PHPP. Right? There's nothing here. There's still no information here. So I haven't actually input any information into this Excel yet, but I have established the connection successfully. So let me just uh, sort of um, bring these down here. There we go. So I have, let me reorganize a little bit here. So I've established the connection to Excel, but I haven't actually input any data yet. So let's do that. So, so I have my, my Excel instance. If we take a look at the output here, the output is an, an active Excel instance. And you can see the, the path which it's hooked into, which it's connected to. And so what I need to do is I need to write all of these PHPP objects to that Excel instance. So we're going to do that using the write to Excel component. So the write to Excel component is going to take that active Excel instance and it's going to take those Excel objects. So the Excel objects that it's expecting are going to get input into this guy here. Now, the one problem that we have is that these are useful. These are good PHPP objects. So all of the data here is formatted exactly the way that PHPP wants. But these elements don't actually know where they're supposed to write themselves to in these various worksheets in these various uh, ranges here. So we have to do one last step. So there's one last component that we need to use, which is smart enough to know, OK, if you're a material, you're going to go in this worksheet, or you're going to go in this other worksheet, etc. So that's going to be one of our new components here. And it's going to be this guy, this Create Excel Object Geometry component. So I'm going to drop them him onto the panel or onto the canvas here as well. And you can see here that this has a, an input for PHPP objects. So we're going to take this PHPP object output, and we're going to put that right into the PHPP object input. And now what we see as a result are a series of Excel writable elements. What does it mean to be Excel writable? Well, it means that you are a, a, a very simple object. You have a, a worksheet, a cell range, and a value. And that's it. So this guy has taken all of those PHPP objects and it sort of unspooled them and converted them into Excel writable objects. So these guys are now ready to write out to all of the various worksheets and uh, cell ranges within the PHPP. And you can see there's, you know, I don't know how many we got, a couple hundred uh, uh, write elements. They're all going to get written to the various cell ranges uh, with these uh, different values. So as soon as I hook this up, you'll notice that all of this is going to get pushed through into my Excel model up there. So if I take this and I connect this guy together, I take the uh, two PHPP geometry and I input into the Excel objects here. And you'll notice in real time, the uh, elements start to stream through into my PHPP. Now, that was a little bit slow. Uh, one thing that you can do to speed that up is to make sure that your calculation option is set to manual calculation. And that way, every time a new value is written to Excel, it doesn't recalculate the entire worksheet. So make sure that uh, in formulas, your calculation option is set to manual. And the other thing that we can do to speed up that process is here in our writer, we have this use difference input. So we can make sure that that is set to true. And what that's going to do is it's going to filter the writing for only the elements that change each time. So rather than writing out the entire PHPP every time that the Grasshopper definition recalculates, only the elements which have changed are going to get rewritten. And so for instance, if I was to go back and grab my geometry here and I was to flex it a little bit, I was to change the size of it, notice that all of those uh, surface elements update the size elements, but only 12 values were actually written out to that Excel. Uh, the rest of it stayed the same. All the materials stayed the same. All the you know, general, the climate information all stayed the same. The only thing that changed were those surface parameters. And so it's a, a much shorter, much smaller number of updates that need to get pushed to the Excel. So once the Excel is up and running, and once you've written out the first time, updates should be much, much faster. It should be much simpler to move those updates through. So uh, that should be it. Um, at, at this point, we now have a successful definition. We have made some super simple geometry. We've created our honeybee zone. 
we've export that honeybee zone to energy plus so we could if we choose if we chose whoops go off and uh, run or simulate this IDF file we could run the simulation there we also have the same model streaming out to our Excel-based PHPP model. So we have the same exact geometry, the same exact materials, the same exact scene, the same climate, everything pushing to both an Energy Plus and a PHPP model at the same time. And as you saw, this connection is live. So as I come in here and I start to manipulate and change the geometry of my zone, all of that data is going to update. It's going to stream through into my Excel document here. So hopefully that all makes sense. This is I know this was kind of a this was a long introductory video, but I wanted to sort of get the, the basic building blocks down in pieces here. Um, in the future, we'll keep doing um, a series of these videos. We'll try and make them much shorter. We'll uh, attack individual uh, pieces one at a time and sort of flesh out different uh, details. So uh, we'll probably next we'll talk about um, uh, building out some interior room information. We'll talk about um, uh, uh, parameter assignment. Um, you know, changing uh, these ugly names, for instance, um, and then how we manage the assignment or the, the type of surfaces that all of these elements are. We'll, we'll talk about uh, adding uh, materials and constructions. We'll add some windows to our project. We currently just have an opaque box. We'll add some windows. We'll add a ventilation system. We'll set up mechanical systems, uh, and we'll sort of look at how all of that connects to the PHPP. Uh, and then, of course, we'll evaluate our uh, uh, certification compliance as we go as well. Um, so again, hopefully that all made sense. Um, uh, we'll uh, uh, definitely be posting a lot more of these videos. And uh, yeah, I look forward to um, uh, uh, hearing about your experiences using the idf to ph toolkit. If you have any comments or thoughts, um, please uh, uh, make sure to shoot us an email. Um, uh, we would love to, to hear about it. So I look forward to seeing or, or hearing from everybody. Um, and um, I'll uh, see you back here uh, at the next video. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.